Hey everyone, it's Justin, Jessica, Patty, and Alabama from Pale Horse Adventures. In this video, you're invited to join us on an overland adventure through Joshua Tree National Park. This is our first time taking the Bronco to Joshua Tree, and we're planning on avoiding the crowds by taking 4x4 trails into and out of the National Park. No more hour-long lines at the front gate for us. We enjoy the trails, have a few exciting moments, and then find a great dispersed camp spot in a super remote area just outside the park. So thanks for joining us. Let's go hit the trails. We start the journey just before dawn and quickly find ourselves driving into a beautiful sunrise. We're typically not morning people, but these sunrises are a nice bonus for hitting the road early. We've got a full day ahead of us, so let's put down some miles. You know you're getting close when you see these guys. Alabama, is this gonna be your first trip to Joshua Trick? Is it? Have you been before? Tell me. Have you? First, we make a quick stop at the sign that was featured on the cover of Caius's 1994 masterpiece, Welcome to Sky Valley. Pretty cool if you're a metal fan like I am. Soon we were back in the Bronco and would be coming up to our first trail in just a few minutes. Burdu Canyon starts out as a paved road that quickly gets rough and then turns into a 4x4 trail. Many people use the first mile of this area as a shooting range, and unfortunately, a dumping ground. But once you get past that, you'll be peacefully on the trail, away from everybody. After stopping to walk the dogs a bit, we aired down the tires and got ready to hit the trail. I was excited. Purdue Canyon is a 14 mile trail that starts out in BLM land and then eventually crosses the boundary into Joshua Tree National Park. While this trail is rated as moderate, most of the difficult sections do have bypasses. The majority of this trail is sandy wash with a few rocky sections. There is one mandatory spot on the trail that requires some ground clearance and some careful tire placement. We'll get to that in a bit. The first obstacle is this optional three foot waterfall, and the Bronco just makes it look way too easy. As we made our way toward the second obstacle, the trail begins a steady incline into the mountains, and the canyon eventually narrows. It was around this time that we ran into the first and only fellow traveler on this trail. He was evaluating the second obstacle, and we agreed to take it first. This one is also optional. And while not as big, it is slightly more technical as you have to be aware of several rocks on all sides. We 
got it. You got it. Just watch the rear side. You're good. Yeah, uh, you're, you're clear. Go that way. Keep going. Slow. Slow. Yeah, you'll go over that rock. It's okay. Okay. Go straight a little bit. This narrow rock waterfall is the third obstacle. It has no bypass, making this the most challenging section of the trail that is mandatory. It's not overly difficult, but it does require some ground clearance and taking it nice and easy. As we came out of the canyon, we soon found ourselves in a Joshua Tree forest on top of a hill. Once we began to descend, the views overlooking the Queen Valley were incredible. Eventually we reached the end of Burdue Canyon and connected with Geology Tour Road. This is a well graded dirt road that just about any car can drive. Coming from this direction, it will take us out to the main road in the National Park. Which park? I know we're not coming in the normal way of the park. Oh but yeah. Like you know how crazy packed it gets here on a weekend. Oh yeah. You know? Like hour long line to yeah. get in. Yeah. So like it's 11:30 and we're like in the park already and you know I'm yeah. just saying we're gonna see more once we get on the actual road we're gonna see more of our cars the later it gets before it's coming late. Yeah, right definitely. Now. No cars right now. <laughs> any cars. So what's on the menu for lunch? <laughs> bread, homemade got, pickles, got some turkey, hummus, and carrots and tomatoes. These girls just staring at our food. Albim, are you even drooling? Oh, oh my shit. goodness, you're even drooling? After having some lunch and relaxing a bit, we found ourselves on the main road in the park. It was a little bit of a shock to suddenly be surrounded by thousands of people and cars after having been all by ourselves for several hours, just a few short miles away. I guess this is why we love overlanding so much. 
we get to see this whole hidden side of the world that is existing all around us. Jessica and I have always loved nature, as well as road trips, and having the Bronco this last year has allowed us to combine the two in such a unique way. During that time, we have gone on over a dozen off-road adventures, and this has honestly been one of the best years of my life. I'm looking forward to many more. Old Dale Road, we want to go that one. Mm -hmm. After driving 30 miles on pavement, we turned off on Old Dale Road, the final trail of this adventure. Old Dale Road is a 26 mile trail that starts in the Pinto Basin in the heart of the National Park and takes you up and over the Pinto Mountains and dumps you onto Highway 62, just east of 29 Palms. About halfway along the trail, you cross the National Park boundary into BLM land, and that's exactly where we're headed since there's no dispersed camping in Joshua Tree National Park. This trail is mostly easy, however it is rated as moderate due to the half mile segment of trail that consists of narrow shelf road that's quite rocky. So we have left Joshua Tree National Park. We're now on BLM land. And this is one of many mines in this area. Okay, I do it. Cool. Time to hit the old dusty trail. <laughs> After leaving the flag bunker, we hit the most difficult section of the trail. There are a few switchbacks, and the trail is in very rough condition. I would not recommend doing this trail in anything but a high clearance 4x4 especially going uphill. However, we put it in four low, took our time, and eventually the road opened up and it was smooth sailing. It was now well into the late afternoon and this had been a very long and exciting day. With all of the difficult sections behind us, we were now focusing on finding a nice spot to camp for the night. Luckily, there's plenty of good camping in this area, and we found a nice spot down a little offshoot off of Old Dale. We felt like we had the entire valley to ourselves. Look at this. I think this is what they call we out here. <laughs> Cheers. Nice Cheers. little camping spot. Whew. That was a fun day. This spot ain't half bad. Probably I'm just complaining about it. Well, you can't make everybody happy. <laughs> so. so we did Burdu Canyon, Geology Tour Road, and Old Dale Road. And we're camped somewhere off of Old Dale. Yeah. A little rockier than I thought coming up uh, the old Dale switchbacks. I knew it was gonna be a little rocky. It's <laughs> Hold on to your a bit rocky. It's cold 
see Joshua Tree in a different way. We've been here so many times, but yeah, it's definitely nice to be in the outskirts. Yeah, definitely. And the sun is just going down. Almost five o'clock. Beautiful. <laughs> Alabama's our sous chef. Look at that cutie. You're a good helper. Yum. <laughs> what you doing, Pat? We had a nice relaxing morning before leisurely packing up and getting back on the trail. Well, that wraps up another Pale Horse Adventure. If you enjoyed this video, you can help us out by giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to join us on the next one, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.